a look at some day two wide receiver prospects that may make some sense for the Dolphins, depending on what they choose to do in free agency between now and the end of the month. Here today on Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Cal Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Tip of the cap to our everydayers because it is your team every day and sometimes twice a day, like today, here on Locked On Dolphins. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase on last minute tickets. Lowest prices guaranteed. We were going to do some defensive players, but in honor of the departure of Stephon Diggs from the AFC East, we will be looking at a trio of day two wide receiver prospects that may make some sense uh, for the Dolphins. These are players that uh, I think it probably a safe statement to say you'd love to see the Buffalo Bills not land any of those players in the midst of their wide receiver room overhaul. Uh, the news came through shortly after I finished recording our first episode of the day that Stefan Diggs was being traded from the Buffalo Bills to the Houston Texans for a 2025 second round draft selection, some pick swap stuff going on there, and uh, really shaking up the landscape of this AFC East. You know, for all of the questions around Miami and their own roster attrition with Christian Wilkins and Robert Hunt, uh, Buffalo is a team that is undergoing their own changes. The Jets have been very aggressive. Uh, I, I think the landscape of this division is going to be really fascinating for uh, the 2024 season. And Miami should view this opportunity or this season as an opportunity to uh, strike and take advantage and do what they could not quite finish the job to do last year, which is win the division and secure home playoff games. That expectation, I think, for Miami is, is still very much in play. So let's talk about the search for wide receiver three. We did a bunch of first round prospects or, or typically associated to be first round or early second round prospects uh, the first time through. One of the players we'll do today is somebody who you see in the end of first round of mock drafts. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know if he'll ultimately end up getting there, but we're doing Roman Wilson from Michigan, Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky and Lad McConkey from Georgia. And those are the three kind of next in line. Uh, for us here with prospect spotlights. I, I think any of these players specifically are in play for Miami as day two wide receiver prospects. It's very important to emphasize because I'm sure somebody will hear Roman Wilson and be like, hey, sounds like a nice player. I want to use a first round pick on. Yeah, neither would I. <laughs> so great minds think alike. But um, as we get ready for all of the possible combinations and iterations, it's, well, if you use an offensive line pick in the first round, and you could either go wide receiver or defensive tackle if you're going to try to fill out your needs. Or if you go wide receiver early, then your day two pick is looking like either an offensive lineman or a defensive tackle. Or you go defensive tackle, then you could go offensive line. Like it just, the, the merry go round is, uh, it's all about the combinations, the possible combinations, and familiarizing yourself with what all of them look like is an important piece of that puzzle. So let's start with Roman Wilson, who's one of my favorite players. Um, Regardless of position, regardless of fit for Miami, just watching his tape, I thought he was a really, really uh, likable player. Uh, played at the University of Michigan, five foot ten and three quarters, so just short of five eleven, hundred and eighty five pounds, thirty and three eighths inch arm, and nine and three eighths inch hand. So, from a size profile perspective, seventeenth percentile height, fifteenth percentile weight, a wingspan of seventy two and a half inches is an eleven percentile. 12th percentile arm length, but a 50 percentile hand size. So, you know, if you're thinking about hands and catching with your hands, he at least checks that box. But this is not a big football player. And I think at the conversation of Miami and what they want to add to their wide receiver room at the at the crux of the argument is, do you want a different kind of player? Now, of course, we added Roman Wilson when we did the mock draft on the show earlier today in the second round. So it was a sensible one to throw in here and have the conversation. He ran a 4 3 9. Uh, which is 86 percentile with a 1-5-2 10-yard split. The explosiveness element is very much here. But then when you look at Roman Wilson with his uh, profile, this is a player who plays the vast majority of his snaps, especially the last two seasons, 
as a slot player. Now, he moves around. He's capable of winning down the field. He's capable of winning on all three levels. Uh, but 206 of his 300 passing snaps in 2023 were passes that are, were reps that were allocated from the slot. So this is a player from Michigan that has gotten a lot of run uh, versus 100. And I'm going to do math live on the air. Always a problem. 112 snaps the last two seasons combined as a perimeter wide receiver. And I think when you think about his stature, I think about when I think about some of his weaknesses, uh, it makes sense that the utilization falls where it does. Now, there's some nice things that you can find in spite of uh, the stature. He plays really hard. He's got a, a big time edge to his game, and he's got really good hands. A two percent drop rate this year. He dropped one pass. He's credited with one drop this year. Um, that consistency at the catch point. Michigan didn't necessarily need a ton of big plays in the passing game all season long, but when they did, Roman Wilson usually made them. He had an average depth of target this past season of thirteen point nine, so about fourteen yards downfield. He's capable of attacking the middle of the field and stacking particularly safeties vertically down the field as a slot player. You get those assignments a little bit more frequently. So you, you like the versatility as a complementary option in the passing game. Do I think Roman Wilson would ever be a wide receiver one for an NFL franchise? No. Do I think he could be a viable wide receiver two as he continues to mature and develop and get a little bit better at what I think he needs to get better at? Yeah, I do. So that progression plan for Miami, you know, do you, do are you in a place? Are you comfortable with another, the rest of the roster to say, hey, there's some redundancy here with the guys that we have, but it's more of the same. It's a good contingency, and there's a long term air if Waddle moves up to be the wide receiver one whenever they choose to move on from Tyreek Hill or Tyreek Hill is done with football, then Roman could step into the wide receiver two spot. Like I think that's a realistic career pathway for Roman Wilson. Uh, you just wish that that he was a little bit more of a versatile player versus what Miami already has. Because now you're putting, if he has to play in the slot, and I don't think he has to, but I think it would benefit him early on. Uh, now you're looking at Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell being players that uh, are continued to be fixtures on the perimeter of your offense. Uh, I'll say this for Roman Wilson, too. Um, he was not frequently in position to win contested catches, but physicality was the element as a receiver that I thought gave us gave him the biggest issue. As a blocker, I, I love he's got he likes to eat dirt. He does a lot of dirty work. Uh, I think he's a fit for Miami in that regard. Absolutely. But um, as far as the top of the route stem, as far as press coverage and getting off the line of scrimmage when he's faced with somebody directly in his face. Uh, I would regard those to be areas for Roman that kind of took away from the short area agility and the linear explosiveness. Now, if you're going to play in the slot more often than not, you're going to end up having more free access off the line of scrimmage, but you still have to negotiate collisions in the middle of the field when you're on your route stem. And for Roman, the better he gets at that and anticipating that or setting that up to work around that, uh, the more consistently... I think his separation is really going to shine, which he has a high level of. Uh, for me, this is a player that would be in consideration at 55, depending on what you achieved uh, with your first round pick and what would be available to you uh, at the other positions that you consider to be primary needs because wide receiver three is a notable need, but it's not one of the most pressing needs on the roster. So that's Roman Wilson. We're going to do Malachi Corley next from Western Kentucky. Nickname is the Rack King. We'll talk about him and the entirety of his game here next on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. So stick with us. Say goodbye to frustrating ticket purchase experiences for all of your favorite events, including Major League Baseball. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for the MLB, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Those last minute deals, you could save up to 60% off last minute tickets for sports, comedy, theater, concerts, and more. And you can view a panoramic view of your seat 
before you buy. So there's no surprises. Game time also will credit you 100%, 110% of the difference if you find tickets for cheaper in the same section and row. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today for lowest last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So let's get into Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky, who profiles very differently as a player than Roman Wilson. I think I think that's the part of this conversation that makes it such a fascinating discussion. He came into the combine at five foot 11. So about the same height as Roman Wilson, but he came in at 215 pounds with a 32 inch arm reach and nine and one eighth inch hand size. So 81st percentile for wide receivers from size perspective, where Roman Wilson was in below the 20th percentile and his arm length, which impacts your catch radius and, and how far away from your frame you are able to catch the football was 55th percentile as well. Uh, he didn't test. He tested his pro day and ran a 4.47. So that's kind of the notch in his belt. He's not a 4.3 speed player. He's a high 4.4 player. Um, and the profile as far as where the production comes from is really interesting as well. You know, Roman Wilson is exclusively, almost exclusively the past two seasons, a slot player but he didn't force a lot of missed tackles. Uh, I think he had five yards in the screen game last year for Michigan, and, and his average depth of target was 14 yards downfield. You contrast that to Malachi Corley, his average depth of target was five and a half yards. About one-third the distance down the field of Roman Wilson is where Malachi Corley made his hay. Now, he also forced 15 missed tackles. He caught 42 passes in the screen game for 330 yards, and there was no receiver in the NFL or in college football who had more screen yards to his name than what Malachi Corley did. So when you think about Miami, it's do you want the player to execute those things that we've seen from another player to execute the things that we've seen from Miami? Or do you want to continue to have Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill be the players that get those touches and have somebody else who can threaten you in a different kind of way? And, and I don't have the answer. I know that he's been a, a high volume player uh, and, and he also takes a significant portion of his volume from the slot at Western Kentucky. And instead of playing at Michigan, he plays at Western Kentucky. And I think that's the first place that my mind goes when I think about the questions I have with Malachi Corley is uh, this was a player who playing at Western Kentucky in a very college uh, spread wide open offense, uh, the diversity of the route tree left me with more questions for Malachi Corley than it did with Roman Wilson. I think Roman Wilson runs more routes. I think he wins more routes in different kinds of ways. Um, I think Roman Wilson's shiftier, where Malachi Corley, I think, is a little bit more of a linear athlete, but he's a freight train when he has the ball in his hands and gets downhill. I think perhaps the most fascinating split between the two is you have a five foot 11, 185 pound receiver and you have a five foot 11, 215 pound wide receiver. And when the 185 pound guy has a best, better contested catch rate than you do is the, the big receiver. Uh, I think that's a question that I have as well. And then you watch him against Ohio state and there's fake screens with pumping goes to help get us chunk gains down the field. But the separation was something that I, I really walked away from wishing I had seen more of for Malachi Corley. Now, the scheme touches and the vertical stuff and the screen game, he is outstanding at that. It's kind of the same question that I have with Brian Thomas. It's do you have enough diversity in the ways that you can impact the passing offense to come into this offense and be a net positive contributor and somebody that you teams are going to regret leaving you in one-on-one situations. Uh, and Brian Thomas has the height, weight, speed, vertical, down the field element. Malachi Corley has the get the ball in his hands and let him force missed tackles to create type element to his game. I just don't know that either one is diverse enough that I would get like really optimistic. I think there's a long-term trajectory for just about every player to come into the league and have success. Now, 
A lot of them don't, unfortunately. I think Miami's offensive infrastructure gives you a better than average chance of finding success. So I, I can see the pathway for Malachi Corley in the same way that I could see the pathway for Brian Thomas Jr. It's just the uh, appetite that I have for that being, especially at 55, where you feel like you, you could have some really good players, maybe not necessarily at, at as pressing of needs for Miami, but if the board doesn't break favorably to you and there's some, there's going to be some other good players that are left at other spots that you're either prepping to make contract decisions on or you have enough snaps to go around where that guy can play meaningful snaps for you uh, to just reach on a wide receiver when some of these veterans are still lingering out there. I think that the opportunity cost is the biggest question that I have. Now, I like Corley as a player. If Miami had a three, I'd, I'd say, hey, you know, you get back around towards the end of the third round and he's still there. Yeah, go ahead and, and run the card in and you feel good about uh, the value that you got at that stage of the draft, but Miami's really boom or bust in that regard because they have 55 and nothing right now. And maybe that'll change. And if that changes, then I would say my assessment for, for like value for Malachi Corley, especially in this wide receiver class where there's a lot of different kinds of contributors with styles that, that are different. Um, a guy who wins most predominantly, uh, he was barely in the top 500 in average depth of target for college football pass catchers last year. And that's um, that's something that I, I am mindful of potentially being a good thing, but also potentially not being a good thing if you operate within a box. And we want somebody who expands the box or changes the box or breaks the lid off the top of the box. So Corley's an interesting player. I'm interested in Malachi Corley. I think the run after catch uh, work that he does is undeniable. And it would be a sorely needed asset to Miami and what they have in the skill group. But at the cost of running a diverse route tree that puts you in enough different places where you don't have a tell, right? Think about Mike Gusecki in this offense in 2022. And you knew when he was on the field, yeah, you know, 80% of the time they're going to pass the football. And Mike's best routes is those deep crosses. And if he's running them, it's at the expense of somebody who is even more efficient at running those routes, running them. Is that a conflict that that Corley would present? I, I don't know what their plan would be, but as I'm projecting it, I would envision that it is potentially at an opportunity cost that is in conflict. So you wouldn't want to invest too early, but there is a point where the value exceeds uh, the question. And I think for Miami, that would be late on day two. Now, we have Lad McConkey up next here on Locked on Dolphins. Make sure you stick with us. This is a really fascinating player who, uh, another slot type, but somebody who I think perhaps has the highest ceiling out of all the players that we've talked about here today. The sports calendar is absolutely loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 that you can use to bet the tourney, Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first big bet a win with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So Lad McConkey is from the University of Georgia. And in the same way that Michigan didn't really sling the pill around the yard, um, Georgia had only so many passing opportunities to go around when you consider all of the wide receiver talent that they had and Brock Bowers. And then you have Lad McConkey on top of that, who was somebody who, as I got into his tape you kind of notice okay like he really gets run in the slot but you know th there's movement for him they like to move him in the set but they had a lot of wide receivers that they would rotate and, and you know, keep fresh with 2023 was a down year in production for lad mcconkey in 2022 he had 58 receptions for 762 yards and seven touchdowns this year he had 30 receptions on 37 targets for 483 yards and two touchdowns. So this was not necessarily uh, the, the best season that Ladd McConkey had put together. But when you consider his athletic profile at five foot 11 and five, eight, so 
just were almost six feet, about the same size as the other two guys that we've talked about. 186 pounds, 439. He runs the same 40 yard dash as Roman Wilson. Uh, vertical jump of 36 inches, standing broad jump of 10 feet, four inches. Uh, that the, those are 86th, thir- 55th, and 69th percentile, respectively, for the 40, the vert, and the broad jump. Not a big player, but the blend of slot ability with outside and getting off press coverage availability with uh, the number of forced missed tackles, which I think is the blend of in between Corley being a strength and Wilson being non-existent. I'd say McConkie's kind of in the middle of the, the road in that regard. Uh, they ran some scheme touches to him out of motion, which is a little Malachi Corley-esque, but he can also uh, get down the field. His average depth of target was 12 yards, so that's a little bit more Roman Wilson-esque. He, he kind of lands in the middle of both of these two players in a lot of ways. And I think that for Lad McConkey is what makes him somebody that kind of perks your ears up a little bit. So, okay, you know, this is a little bit more well-rounded of a skill set. And he's got really good hands. He's got really good concentration. He's very slippery. This is a high 4-3 athlete. And his field vision is really good. The question that I have with Lad McConkey is coming out of his tape study, uh, didn't get a lot of run in blocking opportunities. And we know this, this offense is no block, no rock, right? So uh, how much of a fire do you consistently have and how effective are you? That's the big question when you consider Roman Wilson's kind of statured the same way and he's got that absolute dog in him. And at the very least, Malachi Corley, even though he was getting scheme touches in a lot of those instances, uh, at 215 pounds, there's a level of physicality that just exists that doesn't when you're 185 pounds. So that's the question that I have for Lab McConkey. But I would say the, the overall well-roundedness of the skill set is what has me feeling like this is the highest ceiling player of this trio. If you ask me to rank them, it would be very, very close. Lad McConkey one, Roman Wilson two. And then I would have Malachi Corley three. Lad McConkey, if you told me he was there in the second round, some mock drafts have him going at the end of the first round, but if he was there for Miami when they came on the board at 55 as just an example, uh, I think that would be a very good value for the Dolphins as well. Um, would I want to trade back and make either any of these guys the face of my draft class? Probably not. I think I'd like to to get a, a, a trench player considering the talent that's available in the trenches versus the need, but you also don't want to box yourself in too much, right? Uh, and depending on how far down you go and depending on how much you would hypothetically get in a trade down, you could very easily sell me if you're telling me, oh, well, yeah, we got a first uh, first round pick, extra first round pick in 2025, and we're picking in the 30s. So, okay, like if the board doesn't break beyond that, you get a first round pick, the board fell terrible for you at 21, we can have the conversation. Some good football players, a lot of options at wide receiver. And that is my homage to Stefan Diggs, now a member of the Houston Texans, no longer a member. Of the Buffalo Bills. That is going to do it for us here today on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. I hope you guys enjoyed another peek at the wide receiver class with a couple of day two targets that may potentially be fits for Miami. Keep it locked in right here on Locked on Dolphins. It is your team every day. I'm out of here.